everyone, welcome back. Today's Halloween tutorial is this really fun 80s inspired Lost Boys Vampire complete with a mullet. So my model today is Billy again. As you can see after all the tutorials we've been doing together the silliness is really starting to set in. Billy printed this top for me this week to wear. This is my Halloween top and I absolutely love it. It's probably my favourite out of all of them. Again I will link the curious store below for you. Another week, another eBay special. Today I have another £10 eBay wig that I'm going to transform into a mullet. Now the easiest way to do this would be to purchase a wig block or a head block and pin your wig to it to be able to style it, to stop it from moving. I'm literally just for your sake resting it on Bill's head so you can see what I'm doing. As he has short hair it's very hard for the wig to stay in place even with a wig cap on so please do excuse his fringe, I'm literally just resting it on his head. So the hair is synthetic and the wig comes with quite a heavy centre parting so it's quite hard to change the actual parting of the hair. So through the centre I am taking small slivers of hair and back combing it quite heavily and then using some got to be glued hairspray to keep it upright. I don't think a regular style hairspray will hold this in place and you don't want to use a gel because you don't want the hair to all kind of clump together. So definitely try the hairspray form. This is something I purchased myself because it really is incredible at holding everything in place. It kind of makes the hair go quite sticky so it's good because as you've already got a little bit of that hair behind it you can kind of give it a spritz, back comb it and then just before you cut it it will kind of stick to the hair behind it. And when you're cutting it you just kind of want to cut into it holding it up because you don't want a uniformed finish you kind of want it to look a little bit spiky and as if it was like a feather cut do you remember the feather cuts from the 70s this is kind of like the evolution of it isn't it the mullet so bear that in mind when you're trimming it i then moved on to the sides of the hair at the front down to the sideburns because this also needed to be cut short and spiky and then sprayed backwards with the got to be glued hairspray the back needs to remain long and shoulder length however it is a bit thick so I started to cut into it just to thin it out and then some of that hair that I've cut out I'm keeping for later. This is the Lost Boys Vampire Prosthetic by Wuchi. It is a foam latex piece and you just need to pop out the eye parts and just do this carefully so that you don't tear the piece because it's quite soft material. As usual I then go in with some witch hazel to cleanse over the skin. It's a natural stringent so it removes any oils from the skin so that the adhesive can stick. Now as this is a brow piece and a cheek piece you do need to go around the eyes to make sure you've removed any oils, lids can tend to get quite oily. Next up you want to apply the piece to your face just to see where it's going to sit so you know where you need to glue. You can either powder around your piece so you have a guide for the glue or you can just freestyle it. The glue I'm using is the Prosade cream, I've used it all this Halloween, good job I have a massive pot of it from the Makeup Armoury. So using a cotton bud I'm applying the Prose cream to the back of the actual piece and I'm also going to apply it to Bill's face. Having it applied to both the piece and the face creates a really nice tight bond and you'll know when you're ready to apply your piece when both the glue on your face and the piece has gone translucent. Now as this is going to be covering your eyebrows and touching your lid itself you need to make sure you go into the brow hair. That's why it's really important to make sure you purchase a glue remover because not only do you want to be able to safely remove it from the skin, you also want to be able to get it out of that hair. Very gently press the very centre of your piece in place, that way you can lift the edges if need be and then just realign them and then press them down into place. Now since I didn't use powder as my guide to apply the glue, I only applied it to the very centre of the mask. Now I'm going in and applying it around the cheeks now that I've got the majority of it stuck in place. For me this is the easiest way to do it because the piece then doesn't accidentally stick to the wrong area of the face. Foam latex is very soft so it can be a little bit fiddly so my advice would definitely be to do it in two sections. So glue down the brow section first and then do the cheeks separately. Like before when you first apply glue to the skin make sure it goes translucent before you stick it down and then you just go around and make sure all those edges are stuck firmly to the skin. As I explained in all my tutorials where I'm using products like this if you need to lift your edge up again you can use a small amount of IPA which you can get from the Makeup Armoury. You want the 99% isopropanol alcohol also known as IPA that is going to reactivate the glue so you can lift it then once the alcohol evaporates the glue will stick back down. As foam latex does have quite bulky edges you can go around and use the cream prosade as a ridge filler. For this particular piece I'm only doing it on the bulkiest sections and instead just to show you that you can almost pretty much disguise it with paintwork, it doesn't have to be entirely invisible. Now I'm taking some liquid prosade and I'm mixing that with a little bit of water in my crystal skull head from the Makeup Armoury and using a latex sponge I'm dipping that into the watered down prosade and I'm using that to bounce that over the foam latex piece to seal it. 
I'm then taking a sponge and I'm patting some of the RCMA No Colour Translucent Setting Powder over the piece to take away that tacky residue. I picked this powder up at the Makeup Armoury. You can also use this powder for your generic beauty makeup. It doesn't just have to be for prosthetic work. With this powder, you want to make sure you get right underneath those eyelids to make sure that when you or your model looks up, your lid doesn't stick to the brow piece. Annoyingly, my camera didn't record the next section. I took the Too Faced Born This Way Multi Sculpt Full Coverage Concealer and used that to cover the entire face and the piece. Sometimes you can apply a rose coral or just a shade on first so that when you apply your base colour, it matches your skin tone. I'm now taking the Benefit Hula Bronzer and I'm using this to kind of warm up around top of the forehead and I'm also going to use that to warm up the eye sockets. When the characters for The Lost Boys actually transformed into vampires, they still looked very human. So I don't want to migrate away from the pale skin too much. I just want to add a little bit of contour to the face to really enhance the brow piece. I'm now using a medium matte brown eyeshadow just across the lid itself and then I'm going back to the hula to contour above the brow bone. I'm actually using a picture from The Lost Boys as my reference image for the areas to contour and shade. So you might want to do that as well. I'm then taking a smaller brush, this is a pencil brush, and adding the same colour into the contours on the actual brow piece. You can instantly see how this really almost creates a bit like an angry appearance to the piece. The shadows are already there, but because we've used a flat colour over it, you can't see them, so you need to enhance that with a darker shade. If you're going to be wearing this costume in a very dimly lit room, you might want to go a bit darker with your contour, but always go lighter and then build up the colour until you're happy with it. You'll find by adding the shading around the top half of the brow piece and onto the forehead, it helps to disguise the seams of where your brow piece sits. Use a smaller brush to get into the furrow of the brow and into those tiny little wrinkles on the piece. I'm adding another layer of the hula bronzer to the forehead but bringing it down a little bit more like a triangle but very very softly. And now I'm going to sculpt the cheeks. Again, adding contour to this area just helps to disguise the seams a little bit. I'm starting the actual contouring of the cheeks where the middle of the ear is. So in line with that, we're going to come down the sides of the cheeks and then down towards either side of the chin. But I want to make sure that we make that chin look as wide as possible. It gives more of a rugged feel. It also sculpts those cheeks. I'm taking a small amount of white foundation. You can use white eyeshadow or white cream based product of any kind. And I'm just dusting a very small amount of that onto the high points of that brow piece just to bring them forward a little bit. Then I'm taking the brown shade from my Toby Sells Post Mortem Palette, this is called Dust to Dust, and with a small amount of IPA, I'm spackling that over the whole face and the neck just to break up the skin tone a little bit. This is a great way to also add some freckles to your face. I'm taking the hair that I cut out of the wig earlier, and I'm now gluing just down the sides of Billy's face, and I'm going to use this to glue that hair to the skin to make it look like it's actually growing out the sides of his head, and it will also just disguise where the wig starts and also those little bits of his hair around his ears. I've done this in my Joker tutorial, my Game of Thrones White Walker tutorial, so I'll link them on screen if you want to see how to do this method. In The Lost Boys, their eyes looked like a really power yellow with a red rim around them. The closest ones I had in stock were the white demon lenses from Camo Eyes. They are white with a red rim around them. So I've laid down one layer of hair very thinly close to the natural hairline and I'm just adding a very small amount of glue a little bit closer to where I've already applied the hair and just very lightly applying a second layer. That way it's a little bit more realistic and it just helps again to disguise Bill's natural hair colour. Also by tucking it behind the ears when it's drying, it's going to dry in that shape. So we want it to go backwards and stay there. If we glue it downwards and then try to pull it backwards, it might come off of the skin. So it's a good idea to glue it and stick it in the direction you want it to lay. make the sideburns blend in a little bit more I'm using a bit of a yellowy toned cream to work that over the hair so it looks the same tone as the rest. We bought some cheap fangs online but to be honest with you they were really really awful they just didn't want to sit on the teeth. We managed to get that one shot before they fell off so instead I'm going to just show you an alternative method and it's also a great addition if you are wearing fangs. This is the Mouth FX Temporary Oral Colouring which you can get from the Makeup Armoury. You get around five or six shades in your packet and this is the red one. You simply roll it around in your mouth and it coats your teeth but don't worry it literally wears off with your saliva and you can also brush your teeth and it comes away perfectly. I hope you guys enjoyed my final tutorial with Billy this Halloween. 
This year I've really enjoyed doing some of the ultimate classics, Frankenstein, The Werewolf, A Vampire and then next year I have another theme in mind but if you've got any suggestions please leave them in the comment section below. Please hit subscribe if you haven't already done so. Don't forget you can follow me outside of YouTube on my social handles, they are at Shami Makeup. I will see you over there and if not I will see you here next week.